start making the andouille sauce. And that's another super simple sauce. Um, so for that, we're gonna need some spring onions, which we're gonna chop finely. Well, So it doesn't have to be light, as long as it's light, slightly fine. It doesn't matter so much how you chop. Because <laughs> it's all gonna be light fried. So when I'm cooking at home, I, I don't really, I know I'm a chef, but I, I don't worry too much about how I chop things or anything like that. I think it's all about just putting, a nice meal together and then it's, everyone is happy anyway. Nobody really um, worries about something not being super finely chopped. And right. this recipe uses ndia, and I know you say in, in the introduction, it's not necessarily traditional. Can you no. explain a little bit more about yeah, what ndia yeah. is and why you've chosen to use it here? Yeah. So andouille is like this, um, I think it's, it's from Calabria. And it's like a spicy kind of like sausage, um, like how, how will you call it, like paste. And the reason why I like it is because I find it very similar to Mexican chorizo. Um, in Mexico, chorizo is like, um, it's not as firm as the one that you normally can find here. And it's, I love it how it blends itself in, in sauces. Um, I'm gonna show you in a minute what I mean, but yeah, so it's kind of like my substitution that I find that I like um, using here in the UK. You can also use, I have used very good uh, Spanish chorizo, but for cooking. So it's the one that is soft. Um, you get rid of the casing and then you just break the meat into the pan and that's it. Another thing I really like about this sauce, I mean, you don't need a lot of ingredients. Um, I'm gonna use some of this lovely grated tomato pulp, which is like um, my simple way to do like a recaudo. In Mexico, we use a lot of recaudo for sauces. A recaudo is a mix of tomatoes, onion, and garlic, and it's blended. So this is like my quick version of, of recaudo. And also it's great in the summer because once you have the super ripe tomatoes in the in the kitchen, this is a great way to use them. Um, let's add some, we're gonna add some oil into the pan. And um, Susie, you said they were grated. Did you literally just grate them against the box grater? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because they, they are so ripe. The, that's the best way to use them. And also you use most of the, of the tomato as well, you waste less. So yeah, literally grating. Susie, we're also using olive oil here. What oil would you use in Mexico? In Mexico? Uh, the most used one is, is canola oil. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But I use rapeseed oil here as well. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of, it's the same really. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I like using olive oil for like flavor, mm -hmm. um, but I mean, yeah, it Any doesn't oil. really matter. Mm -hmm. So we are gonna add all of the spring onions here. There we go. <laughs> you can hear that sizzle. Yeah, I love that. And also the smell of spring onions. That's another thing that I love using in my cooking a lot. Um, sometimes I prefer using spring onions than normal onions, especially during this season, because. I feel like they just have a, they have a different flavor to the sauces. Um, and perhaps also because it reminds me of carne asadas in Mexico, um, where we eat a lot of spring onions. We normally like to char them over the grill and just serve them like that with some lime and some mm -hmm. salt and pepper, mm -hmm. but they're, they're delicious. Oh. Would you serve that as a side dish with meat or? You can serve this as a side dish. So the yeah. squirrel for onions by themselves. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. There, there's actually a recipe in the book, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is grilled spring onions. Um, and it's, this is one of my favorite sides for carne asada. 
Um, and it's also like so easy to do. Like you can just pop them if you're having a barbecue. Yeah, I, I maybe I should explain that, like right? what well, a carne asada is. So it's it's just like a Mexican barbecue. Um so normally you do like steaks and then you have like your real spring onions on the side and any other heat. Sometimes we, we do a lot of like stuffed poblano peppers with some cheese and just like over the grill and they're delicious. Right, so here you can see why I like using dandelion because I love the way it melts into that. You can see how it's so like it's coming together. And it's honestly, it's, it's ready like in 15 minutes, which is another great thing. I'm adding some cumin. And the other thing I like to add is some uh, of this uh, round chili guajillo. Um, I always have a lot of uh, Mexican dried chilies in my cooking, um, of course. <laughs> but I like to have them in bark um, in my pantry. I use them whole and I use them round. Um, round are perfect for sauces like this, where you just want to add a little bit of flavor in an easy way. Um, and I don't know if you want to see how. Okay, that's that's looking really good. Super delicious. Mm -hmm. So all you need to do here is, well, as soon as the spring onions go friend, <laughs> and then Duya gets a little bit of color. <laughs> so then Duya, I think it's coming together nicely. Um, now, we're gonna add some of this. Um, the grated tomato puree. And here, you can also add some stock, or I just use water, because I find that the sauce is quite rich already, so it, there's no need to add more, more stock. And I'm gonna add a little bit of, a little splash of vinegar. And just kind of let that simmer in your sauce. And then simply see some with salt and pepper. But I mean, that's it. That's sauce number two done. All right, so here we're gonna do redo the potatoes. <laughs> so we parboil the potatoes. And then here we're just gonna give them a light. Um, just gonna pan fry them. And this is going to go with the andouja sauce. 